Heartbreaker. Game player. Risk taker. Mover, shaker. No matter what label you throw at him, none of them seem to stick. Hollywood tried to give him an Oscar, but he refused. Women tried to maintain marriages with him, but none of them lasted. And while countless others wanted to be like him, none of them had that enigmatic, incandescent something or other. Will his astrological charts give us a clue as to what made this elusive man tick? In today's Masters episode, we're having coffee with Marlon Brando. Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome back to the Masters series. Today, we're having coffee with Marlon Brando. Now, I don't know what Marlon would be having. I couldn't find that in the research I did this time. Maybe old Marlon would want a whiskey or something. I don't know. Maybe some Learjet fuel to prove that he's tough. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I don't think he'd want that. Maybe, do you know, I thought about young Marlon. Young Marlon would have a milkshake. That's what I reckon. And I would love to meet young Marlon because I think he could really benefit from an astrological reading. But anyway, why don't I get stuck into the notes this time? I've got them on my iPad. You can see I'm going down tangents already. So how about I just get into it? Before I begin, I would like to say I am not the biggest fan of Marlon Brando. I, I didn't know too much about him before starting this case study. So I want to say that if there are any super fans out there, please do comment below. And if you know his astrology, very well and you'd like to add some insights of course please do share below I would love to read what you have to say so yeah and maybe you know his life very well maybe you've watched a lot of his movies I haven't so um, I'm kind of new to Marlon but you can see my take and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put by my side I'm going to put uh, his D1 natal chart that's the one main chart I'm looking at this time and you'll be able to see what I'm speaking about. I'm going to light up different bits as I go. All right, let's get stuck in. So in the introduction to this video, I asked the question, will Marlon's astrological charts give us a clue as to what made this elusive man tick? Now they could if it wasn't for that shining great big Jupiter right in the first house expanding the bottomless depths of the most enigmatic sign of all, Scorpio. Scorpio could be called the Bermuda Triangle of the Zodiac. It's the place where maps won't help you, compasses swivel out of control, and mission critical systems fail to work. It's the place where all the luck of the ninth goes to die. Naturally, it follows on this earth plane of duality that in equal measure, such darkness must give rise to the brightest light possible, where God himself comes to save you, if you only call his name. Speaking of God, look at Jupiter's nakshatra, Jeshtha, ruled by Indra, the king of the gods. It has the power to create a god amongst men, which in Marlin's case, it certainly seemed to do. But this was not an easy incarnation. Jupiter is hemmed by two malefics. And as I set up from the start, it was an incarnation of tremendous contradictions. Marlin was Munglik, Mars in the second house. Now, please don't worry if your Mars is in one of the houses that would make you Munglik. To me, the word simply describes energy. If you're high energy, you'll want to be with someone who's also high energy or you'll simply want to understand yourself and others around you so you can manage your responses better in a group. And this is the, one of the beautiful things that astrology can help you do. In Marlin's life, Mars in the second house produced lifelong effects. I do believe, in part, it was the source of his troubles in early childhood, which it would seem he didn't devote time to overcome. I also believe Ketu in the fourth and an extremely waning moon, new moon, 
also didn't help in the creation of a good home life either, though there are many other factors, too many to cover here. Marlin's Venus was in the seventh house. Though in its own sign, which is good, it's in the house where it delivers, so the Karaka is in its own house. Sometimes this can be problematic for the area in which it delivers, in this case, the love life. Rahu Ketu axis in Kendra positions. In terms of love life, when the Rahu Ketu axis is in Kendra positions, it does bring challenges. For men, it may heighten their sensitivity. For women, it may give them a take charge attitude in relationships. Let's take a look at that all important fifth house governed by Pisces. Sun and Moon are both seated there. Because Pisces is here, I can say with some confidence he would have felt emotionally distant from both his mother and father. This house also features a new moon. His many relationships all had the feel of a new moon, none of them ever coming to completion or experiencing the fullness that a lovesick moon may crave. A perpetual dance where the moon, the queen, would be scorched into near nothingness by the strength of a blazing hot sun. As Rita Moreno wrote in her book, just meeting him that first day sent my body temperature skyrocketing as though I had been dropped into a very hot bath. I just want to say that quote is so astrologically perfect because Pisces is water, you know, and she's describing it here as being dropped into a very hot bath. It's so perfect. Back to the script. But in terms of Marlin's work, this house was key in guiding his creativity, his work on stage. Jupiter gave him access to the depth of all emotions, those which don't even have labels or go untapped by most people. While Pisces gave him a breadth of types of roles, from stealing a light-hearted singing and dancing lead role from Frank Sinatra in Guys and Dolls, to depicting the horrors of war in Apocalypse Now, Marlin did the lot, shoring up Jupiterian depths through his son, which got channeled through ambitious Rahu. Marlin was able to deliver uniquely commanding performances with the perpetual newness of a new moon. It's no wonder he won the Oscar for Best Actor twice in one lifetime. One trivial thing I can easily see and verify through the life is Marlin's physique, which he found hard to keep trim over time. Jupiter in a watery sign in the first house can do this. There is no aspect from Saturn or Mars, so he continued to put on weight as time went by. Me being me, the thing I find most attractive about Marlin's chart has nothing to do with what he looked like, his money or his worldly success. Ketu in Satabishak is what catches my eye and it caught the eye of school teachers who noticed a young Marlin defending the weaker kids on the playground. This pattern didn't stop. He did it on the world stage at large, asking Native American Sachin Littlefeather to represent him at the Oscars. Instead of collecting the award, she shone a light on the American Indian movement, a masterstroke that yet again placed the Godfather firmly in a league of his own. So I hope you enjoyed that overview of Marlon Brando. Please let me know in the comments below and I look forward to seeing you next time.